Let's also do a quick setup for materials and lights, and then use this photo as a reference for rendering. So this is glossy, as we can see, and it has a um, bump mapping. This is metal, and we see light is coming from the top. Light is also coming from the left and the right, less from here. And we can see here, there's one, two, three light sources, and even like a dull one on top. Again, that's uh, something I would always look for, um, or I suggest when you want to learn rendering, find references uh, of actual photos, obviously, and then try to rebuild it. Okay, so uh, let's go to here. First thing, what I would like to do I need, because I just removed this one, I need to add my uh, stuff here. There, very good. So all this is done. Kitchen, now I'm going to sort all these elements here. There and there, and that goes to there, and this one goes all to also to there. So that's that collection. Could call this one drawing pad. Then let's make a new collection, and I call this one lighting and camera. So I can always easily show and hide these objects. Let's work on the materials first. This is darker, and this is brighter. We will just do some very basic materials first. So just a plastic, uh, roughness maybe 0.2, and we said this is kind of dark, and here, there. And let's go to this one. This is slightly grayish, and also reflective, and 0.2 for the roughness. The um, steel was well, metal, so metallic up, specular down, roughness to there. Metal is that steel is slightly yellowish, so I move my yellow or my cursor to yellow. Then I go to HSV, and then now you can see I can slide the hue much, much better. There, because it's not a white metal. I can also use their names, countertop, backslash, and then here this should be porcelain. Let's make this specular and 0.1 porcelain. We could make this actually a slightly bluish porcelain. There. Okay. Ah, oh, see, that's still way too big. So here, porcelain, and then this one we could call drying pad. This is actually pretty flat, so maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2. We can modify this more as needed. It's also a nice contrast in terms of colors, how they all stick out. Very good. Uh, what do we have here with this object? Okay, we make this one darker. There. I like that dark green. That's a good combination. Two, two, that's good. What about the green? Uh, two, I just select the same things here. Actually, it should be silicone, so it's probably more 0 0.1, 0 0.3. The bristles should be nice and reflective. So I will press Control C to copy that color. Go to my bristles. Obviously, I need to find that correct thing. There we are. So. This has now its own material. 
copy the color back in, Apple V or Control V. This is very reflective, not really rough. Alt H to show everything again. Very good. Our basic materials are set. Let's quickly do camera and lights. I will wait before we continue. I want to split my screen this way. Here we will load in the shader editor and then we go this way. Uh, N, okay, then control, uh, shift A camera, shift A empty. The empty I position to here, the camera I position to there, then camera, shift click the empty, control T, we, we track it, okay, control T doesn't work. And let's use the menu. And then with the camera selected, click on camera, zip, and there we are. And now I can move the camera up. I would like to use the photo as a reference. So background images, add image, open, there it is. Um, and now I can position my empty, yeah, I think that is good. I have to move this around. We can see that actually this is pretty big. Also, um, this is a new recording, so I'm not sure if I did that before or not. Um, let me repeat this. So 1,200 by 964. That's the image size. So we go to the output dimension and then we put in the exact number. So otherwise, for example, that image will be distorted as you can see. This then helps us to match the camera exactly to the to the photo. I will press after changing this S so the camera is smaller, the camera has to get more closer. You see now we the size of the brush lines up maybe see the rotation um what about the empty do we have to position the empty maybe somewhere else there okay and the the angle of my view is wrong so there I use this what about the height g and z z See, they are lined up this this edge. That's pretty good. And maybe the empty and the camera, I just slide up and down there. And maybe in top view, G and Y, Y, or G and Y, I slide it back this way there. Not 100% the same but we are close. Let's look in front and when we switch, we are, it's not too bad. Okay. It looks to me the camera inside the um, photo has a stronger lens. So I set this to 35. And I can get a little bit closer. Yeah, no, it's a little bit closer to that. Look in front and actually change the reflection if we want to. The camera has to get closer. There, okay. Uh, maybe let's make this 42. Okay, G and Y, G and Y, Y, yeah. I keep this at a 50. Move this out a little bit there. And I would like to have a little bit more of this edge of my sink in my screen. So this now I can turn off. 
I think we we found a good compromise, and now we can just fine tune everything. The camera needs to get a little bit lower. The empty maybe a little bit higher there, and then here my my two bolts and this pad in top view. I just want to move in a little bit. Let's say till there. Okay. Now, so it's up to you to play with this a little bit. We can also zoom out a little bit more. Maybe bring this GZ, bring this down a little bit, bring that empty a little bit up. And there. That's also not too bad. So now we see the backdrop doesn't fit. Well, not a big deal. Welcome to product presentation. We just uh, adjust everything as needed. And we have basically camera and um, material set up. Let's quickly do some lights. So let's go to the world. This is white and 0 0.025. Never forget to save first. And our render engine is cycles. Let's do a quick preview. Uh, very good. And there are a few things I need to quickly set up on my site. This is not something you have actually in your model. So give me one second. So where is my brush? There's my brush, tip detail. Oh, there's the kitchen, tip detail. Uh, site trim, this one here don't show up in my rendering. Very good. And I will select my brush here. Sub D is on, this is all good. Uh, let's do a quick preview again. Very nice, okay, and that's good. I have a cube here, so that cube um, brush tip, was it that one? Brush tip cutout. Ah, we need to turn this one off so it also doesn't show up inside that uh, rendering. So the viewport, because this is visibility in rendering, this is final image in rendering. Okay, good. Uh, Alt H, again, turn these off. And let's show the kitchen part. You see here these um, use um, the cuts for the, the drawing pad. Uh, is it this one? Yep, yeah. that one shows up. So also here we turn all this off, including that. So be careful every time when you press Alt H or so, um, you might actually undo all these settings. So sometimes it's easier to just hide and show the object inside the outliner. With zero, let's go back to the camera. Let's see when we go to the world and set this for the moment to one. All this looks not too bad. We can do a quick material setup here. So let's click the metal. This is still way too yellow. So, oh, yucky. Uh, okay, and these elements were glued together. That's the reason why I. I did what you just saw. And we have to further lower the yellowish tint. Uh, maybe 0 0.2. Oh, okay, and then we can drag this to the display. With the roughness, and this is Chrome Super Polish 0.5. This is way too much, so you need to figure out what's a good value, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 for the roughness. For the countertop, if we make zero, it's nice and smooth. Let me show you what we can do with the bump mapping. We would like to have a little bit of a structure on it. So shift A, uh, texture coordinate, shift A, texture and noise, and then shift A, vector and bump. Object to scale, I will put the factor into the color for the moment. 
that you can see the noise. If we set this to 500 or 800, you see the pattern gets smaller. Very good. So fine. And then we can put the pattern into the height. 0.1 for the bump, the normal to normal, and there's our bump mapping. And then again with the strength, we can specify how, how much is there a bump visible. Very good. If I select my handle here, also there I have actually a bump too, the same step basically. And yeah, white plastic. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's the wrong name because we made it gray plastic. Goody. And then for the countertop, because we have the bump mapping, if we want to roughen this up a little bit more, then we can add a little bit of roughness to it. We can also lower the shininess or the strength of reflectivity to just tone it down so it doesn't look super plastic. Here again, for rendering, we can also play with the values because we're illustrating how something should look. So it doesn't necessarily have to be spot on the way how the actual material is. If you want photorealism, that's something you want to do. If, however, you want to use this rendering to maybe talk about the product, we can adjust materials so it supports what we try to say. I will one more time lower this down so I see a little bit more of my brush. Okay, nice. So we need some lights. We will do the lining really quickly. And before we continue, I set this back to point 0.2. So we just have a little bit of ambient light. An area light we add, oh, way too strong, maybe one, uh, 25 centimeters. Okay, move this one up. Um, no, 25 is too small, 50 centimeters. Yeah, okay, maybe to there. You see we get a nice reflection on here. See there, there it is. Actually, that one we can keep one meter. Five, three, yeah, let's take four. This area is flat, so we can move this up a little bit more. Shift D, I move this one to there, and maybe rotate the light a little bit and then this yellow dot I drag onto there and you see how it it rotates actually the light now it looks at that at that element uh, what about we say 10 and then here 50 centimeters so we make this a little bit smaller and more focused and we can also shift the add another light to here and plow this light down so we blow in a little bit light from the other direction. And then you see, I get a nice highlight actually there because of the light coming in there. Okay. This reflection there is a little bit irritating. It's not that one. It's also not that one. Is it this? Oh, this is actually the reflection from there. Okay, and just undo my steps. Just try to figure out what reflection it is. Yeah. Uh, so this one, maybe I move more to here. I want to try out how this looks when the light comes from there. Very nice. And this top light, maybe I move more to here. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit. Mm -hmm. What happens when we I make this all 
zero and then I wrote it rotate it to be horizontal, move it down in front, and move it to there. And you see, based on the camera, that's not good because it's, it's actually shows the reflection. So it has to be actually rather high. OK, so back to there. And then we just shine this one down. To see how individual lights work, we can also select all the other lights and then hide it. So there's this light, which means it's actually pretty weak. We can make this a little bit stronger. That shines a nice line onto there. And here I can now turn where's this light? That is my top light. And then here's the other area light that comes from there. Very nice. Good. OK. I think this is pretty, pretty good for a quick test. Then let's go through the final settings. First, let's click Save. Uh, go to the ULA, we want to turn denoise on. We do a quick 50% rendering. And in terms of uh, color management, I have high contrast and I added a small curve. You see, this was the normal and then high contrast, and the curve adds a little bit of stuff to it. Uh, maybe the curve I don't use in this case. This was from a previous setting. So play with these values so it looks good. And sampling for the final rendering, maybe 200. OK. Then let's do a quick rendering. The metal right now looks very grainy, and the denoise will take care of that. Yeah, and there we are. No, it doesn't actually look <laughs> it doesn't look pretty bad. It looks pretty good. So it really feels like with the blurry reflection that it is it's a brushed surface. Also, the way how I put my lights, I get a really nice sharp highlight here on that edge. That looks pretty gorgeous. Also here, how this works. This is this is great. If I zoom in, I can see the bump mapping detail. Um, this actually is too glossy. I can change this a little bit. This is a little bit irritating, um, but oh well, this is based on the camera. This is all good. So um, in the photo, they have actually something interesting going on here. They also have a little bit of a light reflection there. This area here, they have a light shooting in. You see this drop shadow, which means uh this part is actually not as wide they move that whole part over so that they can then in this opening place a light that shoots the light over to the cup and then cast that that drop shadow on it i'm not going to rebuild it but i just wanted to point this out when you take a look at these photos pay really attention to the shadows, etc. So this material we want to be a little bit more like silicone. So I increase the roughness, specularity I lower. Yeah, if you want, I mean, with the subsurface, you can actually create silicone materials. We will do this with a different project. So let's say this is good. The reflectivity in my case, I feel is still a tick too strong. So I lower this a little bit more. And also here for the backdrop, oh, that's why. Look, if we set this to two, do we then still get the strong reflection on the back? No. There, 
Nice. Moi moi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last thing to quickly add, and depth of field. Let's select our camera and we will distance. Just to see the distance, we would like to show and see the limits. There's the limits and then we can drag this one down to where our brush is. There, okay, the size. We can make it really tiny. So it's you just notice that this area is slightly blurry. Okay, that's pretty good. You don't want to do something like this because that looks awkward. So two millimeters for the size is fine or even one millimeter to have a little bit of a, a backdrop blurriness. It just helps you to focus on the important object. Also, all this is still sharp, very good. So control S to save everything. And then we set this to 100 and samples was actually good with 200 view render. Let's go to slot two and then render. And let's take a look at what Blender then is producing here. And we'll pause this for a second. So when it's done, I will be back. So there we are. Ah, it doesn't look too shabby. There's our bump mapping also there. This is slightly blurry now. Um, so if we compare this to there. You can see that it's too much. You can still see what it is, but it guides your eyes more to the sharp areas. Okay, that basically wraps up this project.